you may or may not have realized this, but I tend to batch record a lot of these particular episodes purely because of my lifestyle and trying to juggle all this stuff. Um, so I don't know whether or not we got 40 likes for the ITV episode. I'm going to be an optimist and assume we have, in which case, thank you so much for uh, for leaving a like on the previous video. Um, it makes me very happy to see the support that the videos are getting, and uh, I hope that we can smash that for this particular episode. So if you're looking forward to this one, uh, please smash the like button for me, that would be awesome. Uh, today we're going to look at a company that is by no way anywhere near as popular as the company we looked at last week, which was ITV, who were, uh, they had 30 million shares a day being exchanged. This company that we're looking at is a FTSE small cap company, 100,000 shares a day, so nowhere near the popularity uh, of, of ITV PLC. Uh, only a 1.2% dividend yield, 1.2 I was supposed to say there, uh, dividend yield, so not really a dividend stock. However, uh, a particularly decent growth stock, I think, we're going to be seeing here today. Uh, over the last year, 10% increase in share price. Over the last three years, that's a 37% increase in share price. And over the last five years, 213% increase in their share price. So promising stuff. Today, we're going to take a look at a company called Treat PLC. <laughs> Hey there guys, welcome then to episode number 15 of the FTSE show. Uh, a pivotal moment, you know, I mean, I had no idea that we were going to be doing 15 episodes. Um, I hoped we would, and it was going to largely depend off the back of the feedback that these videos were getting. Obviously, some of these episodes are more popular than others, depending on the stock that we look at. Uh, but uh, the popularity has been increasing. We've seen the likes going up. We've seen the views going up. So that's awesome. And uh, it's given me the fuel to keep going and keep doing these. Today, we're going to take a look at Treat PLC. They are a uh, FTSE small cap company in the chemicals sector. And I'm pretty much looking forward to looking at these numbers with you. Uh, because I've got a feeling they're going to do relatively well. So uh, let's not delay, let's dive straight in. Okay, so looking at Treat PLC then, uh, a FTSE small cap company in the chemicals sector. Epic code is TET. Uh, there are. This is a much smaller company than many of the companies we generally normally look at, but uh, the size of the business, the size of the company in terms of the financial revenue really doesn't matter to me. What's more important is their ability to grow in terms of share price, and there are some fantastic growth stocks in the FTSE small cap, in the FTSE uh, AIM markets as well, uh, as well as the FTSE 250 and the 100, and uh, we can even see some fantastic growth stocks in the FTSE fledgling index as well if you've ever heard of that um, and so we've got some great opportunities around and what we're looking for is the hallmarks of a growth stock we've got certain parameters we're looking for that generally we would expect to see in a company that's going to be going up uh, dramatically in share price value over the next five ten years so first of all we're, we're going to look at the revenue of the business and we can see here treat PLC's revenue has been steadily growing every single year so it's a nice reliable consistent revenue growth year on year uh, there have been a couple of years where it's become a little bit stagnant uh, 2011 to 2013 for example there wasn't really any growth going on uh, and certainly from 2018 to 2019 we've been stuck at about 112 million a year so we'd hope to see some more growth from treat over the forthcoming years but overall there's definitely been some growth there for sure um, cost of sales is essentially the cost of uh, of selling uh, the product or providing the service as such and uh, we want to see that the cost of sales isn't rising quicker than the revenue if it is we've got a, a, a potential problem there right uh, and we can do that by looking at the gross margin essentially and seeing whether it's going up or down so we look at the gross margin this is the, essentially the mar this is the, the percentage or the slice of the pie that the company has left from the revenue after the deduction of cost of sales so as you can see here it's been up and down over the last 12 13 years uh, but it's pretty much stayed around 25 percent 
uh, starting in 2008, going all the way to 2019. We're looking at 25% both ends. Uh, and like I say, it's been up and down in the mean, in the interim, but uh, we're still there. We're still at 25%. So of all the money that Tree are bringing in, they're keeping at the early stage, they're keeping 25% of that. It's not a lot. You know, only keeping quarter of the revenue coming in before the cost of expenses and interest on debt and all the other deductions and the tax and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's not great, but it's not doesn't necessarily rule them out of being a great growth stock. It just means that they're going to have to do really well with the rest of the stuff to make sure that there's enough profit left over uh, for me to be interested, I guess. Looking at the expenses, which is the next line down here. So expenses obviously are growing along with that, uh, but they're not growing at the same rate in so much that, as we can see here back in 2008, the expenses were 8 million a year, 8.1 million. Uh, but that calculate that, that kind of uh, made up for 64.8 percent of the gross profit uh, by 2014 that had fallen down to uh, well, the, the expenses were at 10.3 million at that point because the company had grown so much in terms of revenue uh, and gross profit by that point uh, it only made up 57.6 percent so that's great because we want to see a reduction in the percentage of expenses against the gross profit uh, and we've seen that essentially the last year it has bounced back up a little bit from 49.8 to 52.9 but generally speaking we've seen a reduction uh, a downward trend from 65 it's nearly 70 all the way down to around 50 now so that's great that's a, that's a really uh, positive move so expenses have still been going up they've just been going up a lot slower than the revenue and the the gross profit have been rising which is great um, we come down to uh, interest on debt that's at a very happy manageable level we've got no concerns there in fact uh, the interest on debt has definitely been reducing from 10 percent of the uh, the operating profit now down to 1.5 percent of the operating profit so we're really happy with that that sounds great um, and then we come down to the actual net earnings of the company and we've Really, what we want to see here is a strong net earnings figure, a strong sort of percentage, uh, and we want to see a trend going in the right direction. We definitely see that trend here with Treat PLC. They've gone from 5.7 to 6 to 7 to 8, and in recent years up to 9, nearly almost just hitting 10% uh, net earnings, which is 10% is, is okay. 10% is about the average, I would say. You know, it's kind of, it's all right. It's nothing particularly exciting. But 10% is kind of the baseline of what I would be interested in. These guys haven't quite made it yet. They're just on the cusp. They're so close to hitting that 10%. Uh, and the, all of the performance over the last 12 years is definitely pointing in the direction that they're probably going to get there at some point in the next few years. So, uh, But it's a very positive trend here, and things are definitely moving in the right direction there. So looks like a well-run business to me. Um, coming down to the balance sheet, uh, assets against liabilities, so short-term assets against short-term liabilities. Assets that we turn into cash really quickly against liabilities that are owed pretty soon. Um, the assets outweigh liabilities by a ratio of almost three and a half or 3.4 that's really healthy that's a fantastic uh means that they have a lot more short-term assets than they do short-term liabilities so that's a really good sign that's good stuff it means that uh, and you can see here they're, they're relatively cash rich so they've got some uh, a decent amount of cash in there which is good um and then what I'm more interested in as well is the debt levels. So in terms of short-term debt levels, they've got 16.8 million. That's fine considering the size of this business. Uh, that's not a big deal. That's, that's going to be repayable quite quite simply. And then long-term debts, the debts that are owed, that need to be paid outside of a year away, uh, only 4.3 million. So again, well within the limits of what we would expect to see a healthy business. Debt's not necessarily bad. A lot of people assume that because a company's in debt that that's a problem. It's certainly not. If you can borrow at 5% and use your business to turn that into an 11% return, then it's good debt, right? So there's good debt and bad debt. And obviously most of these companies 
are using debt in in a very positive way and so therefore we just want to make sure that the debt's not at a level that this company are biting off more than they can chew in terms of being able to pay that off so that's what i'm really interested in um then i'm quite interested in the debt to shareholder equity ratio that's looking quite healthy retained earnings very important for me i, I want to make sure that this company has cash sitting somewhere for mergers for acquisitions opportunities that they might want to bring in for companies or buy out other companies or competitors or grow because this will help with share price growth right uh and and also having money there for a rainy day and uh, and any other opportunities that might come along this company have certainly been pumping into their retained earnings they had 18.9 million in 2008 now sitting on a pot of 56.7 million and they have been pretty consistently year on year adding more money into that pot so that's looking really solid and i'm very happy with that and then the return on shareholder equity has fallen recently this is what return is the company getting on the equity that the business has and uh, it has fallen a little which is a shame uh, that's a slight concern for me it's not a deal breaker uh, but I would like to see that higher. Uh, and capital expenditure is a little high on property, plant and equipment. It is a little bit too high for me, but um, it's okay. So let's take a look at the chart. Okay, so as usual, we're only looking at the period that we've just looked at in terms of the financials. So about 2008 to present day. And you can see here, treat PLC... Uh, the numbers are pretty strong in the financials. They're not amazing, but they're pretty good. And we can see some significant share price growth here that comes with that. Uh, for me, this is a company that aren't quite there in terms of when I would be getting into, a company that I would be investing in. Um, they're close. They're really close. And uh, we can see here that there is some obvious share price growth. It seems to have become... A little bit uh, flat, a little bit stagnant, stuck in a kind of a range from about June 2017 to present day. If we go back to the finance, finances very quickly, I would say that coincides with the fact that we're kind of going through this flat period where we've not seen a lot of revenue growth there. Um, and also the the results have gone down ever so slightly and they've kind of been stuck at this level for a little while. So really, I think if we were to see treat... Uh, release some more annual reports in the future. Obviously, September 2020 is the next one we're going we're gonna to be getting, uh, and that won't come out until a few months after that date. But once we get that report, if they've had a better year, which may not happen with the coronavirus impact, we, I mean, it's very early days, we're only in February 2020 at the moment, so there's a lot of the, the year to recover from this. Um, but if they were to release a better annual report, then I think we could start to see a continuation of that share price growth. Again, that's entirely speculation, and I'm not really one for speculation, um, but I'm just kind of thinking ahead here. This is not a company that right now I would be looking to invest in, but I do like them, and so they are going to be staying on my watch list, and they are a company that I'm going to be paying some very keen interest towards their annual reports going forward. Okay, so much better numbers from what we've seen in some of the other companies. Uh, I think these guys are going to do pretty well on the leaderboard. Uh, let me just get there. A little ticket. I make these myself, by the way. No expense spared. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we are starting to run out of room on this board as well. I'm not quite, I haven't quite worked out what I'm going to do yet, whether or not we're going to go to 30, or whether or not we're literally just going to relegate and knock some of these companies off. Uh, you know, because if we go to 30, I could do the other side of the board, maybe. Or I could just kick some of them off at the bottom, I don't know. Um, but yeah, Treat PLC. So yeah, I like these guys. Uh, they're, they're not a company I would be investing in right now because the level of quality that I'm looking for, uh, they don't quite make that grade, but they're really close to making that grade. And so... They're a company that I'm keeping a really close eye on right now. Every time their annual report comes out, I'm going to be diving on that uh, and uh, and taking a really close look at that because as soon as they start hitting my numbers, I'll be, probably be a buyer. Uh, right now, though, I'm not quite in. So, uh, But these guys have done pretty well. Uh, and I... Yeah, not bad. I think this is about right. 
This is a testament to the scoring algorithm that I use. So, Treat PLC have done pretty well, to be fair. They've scored 67 points. So I'm just going to whack them up on the leaderboard very quickly. Okay, so a very respectable fourth place on the leaderboard. I think that's pretty fair. I think that's pretty, you know, accurate. Uh, these are, this is a good company. Uh, they've clearly got some significant share price growth over the last few years. Uh, their numbers are pointing towards being a very good growth stock. They're just not quite good enough for me. So what I mean by that is this is a very good growth stock. You know, you, you do fine uh, getting into this company and expecting the share price to grow over the next five to ten years if they continue to meet the numbers that they have been meeting. Uh, for me, however, the only reason I'm not an investor myself is because there are better companies out there. And so when you've got your capital and you're looking to see where is the best place to put this money, when there is better companies out there than this company, unfortunately, I'm not going to be buying this company. Uh, I'm going to be putting my money into the companies that just pip this uh, Treat PLC. Uh, but that doesn't mean Treat are a bad investment and they may well do better than some of the companies I've actually bought into. Uh, but yes, for my, for my money... Uh, treat PLC not quite there but very very close on the cusp so uh, yeah a score of 67 points is good I think if they release another annual report and it's an improvement on the last one uh, then we could probably see that jumping up into the 70s maybe even the 80s in which case I will start to become very interested and maybe putting my my money where my mouth is so to speak uh, but yeah for now a decent company you can't really go too wrong with treat PLC Hey there guys, just before you go, I'm really enjoying doing these FTSE show videos. Uh, if you are too, please give me a like on the video, uh, just so I can see that people are actually gaining value from the content. Uh, and subscribe if you haven't done so already, because I plan to do many, 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 many more of these. Uh, I've got plans very soon to start doing these two a week. At the moment, Lifestyle doesn't allow me to do that, but very, very soon, two a week. Uh, if you want to reach out and say hi, I welcome it with open arms. Uh, you can get me at this email address, chris at thecleantrader.com. And if you want to check out the work that I'm doing, you can go to thecleantrader.com website. Uh, there's loads of information there, including links to previous episodes. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in next week's episode. Cheers. Cheers.